there was a really funny moment where Trump is talking about how um, how he is the one who lowered drug prices, and that's why he's the best on health care. And he attacks Joe Biden for saying how you know you and Obama could have done could have lowered drug prices during your administration, but you were too afraid to, and that's that's because I'm the only one who's brave enough to take on big pharma. And then no longer than two or three minutes later, they bring up the coronavirus uh, vaccines and Biden says how they're being rushed because Trump wants to use them as a political, uh, a political, uh, a political prop, which is true. And he doesn't trust Mm -hmm. it. And then Trump goes, Oh, you don't trust Johnson and Johnson? You don't trust five? These are the groups you just said you were taking on. What do you mean? All of a sudden, you're their biggest supporters? Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, just another moment of him. Like, this is the same thing with the law enforcement thing, where one moment he's Mr. Law and Order, and the second moment he's Mr. Uh, all of a sudden talking about uh, justice, criminal justice reform or whatever. It doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. He wants to be like a populist and the establishment at the same time like he wants to be everything at once and that can work to an extent for a candidate if you know some people aren't paying attention if they're tuning out portions of this election but he did all of this in like one debate like it was it was multiple approaches that he took to the same issue like opposing sides on one issue in one debate multiple times for multiple issues And that's not going to work. Like, I think that some people might miss some of this, but a lot of people are going to pick up on that. They're going to pick up on the fact that, oh, wait, didn't he just say that Joe Biden was too tough on crime and now he's hitting Biden because he's not saying law and order? Like, you only have so much wiggle room to where people are going to realize, okay, this guy's full of shit. He's, like, taking both sides of every single issue. He's Pete Buttigiegging it. And people see through that. Now, now let's, let's, let's move on to this and have the perfect segue. It's another moment where Trump is talking out both sides of his ass. I want to segue into the the centering of the left during this debate. Amazing how a debate between centrist Joe Biden and right-winger Donald Trump, the left was such a big topic. I mean, we really are taking over the country, if that's the case. Uh, I mean, we couldn't yeah. win the primary, but we, we certainly... <laughs> Are, are winning in other ways, uh, but but he, here's the moment where you know it, it's it's so hilarious, and he does this all the time. Now, Mike, Joe Biden is controlled by the left. He is just a puppet to the very radical left wing of the Democratic Party. That's it. We mm-hmm. everything he says and does straight from our mouth, Mike. However. Exactly. However, somehow the things we are telling Joe Biden to say is causing Joe Biden to lose the very radical left that is also somehow controlling him. <laughs> we got we got to stop telling Joe Biden to say those not, not even telling. We have to stop making Joe Biden say those things that hurt our feelings, Mike. Don't you agree? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. Does he does he <laughs> does he really like think what he's saying? I mean, first of all, I wish this Joe Biden existed. This Joe Biden that was kowtowing to the left and we were in complete control of. Sadly, that's not the case. Um I also there was another moment where uh, Trump said to Joe Biden, you better watch out for Antifa because they'll come to overthrow you too. Uh, oh, right, right. Don't threaten me with a good time, Trump. I mean, please. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would be real. I mean, I-, I wish what was going on in the Republican mind of how they see the Democratic Party was really going on because it it is, it- it's like a, a it's-, it's-, it's a dream, man. It's a dream. Yeah, if if Biden and Kamala Harris were half as radical as Trump and the Republicans claim, they would be so awesome. Like, I would enthusiastically be voting for them and thinking that, like, oh, my God, like, this is going to mean something. Like, I have hope they're actually going to do all these things. But what I what I noticed is that Trump was trying to, like, quarter Joe Biden. And maybe it worked. Maybe it didn't where he'd say, 
well, you want socialism. You want socialism. And then he'd get Biden to admit, well, no, I support, I don't support socialism. I want to expand the public option. And then he'd say, you just lost the left. You lost the left. And he did this again, like for climate change, where Joe Biden said, I don't support the Green New Deal. And then he said, you just lost the left. So it's like we... We have two competing narratives, and I don't know which one he ultimately wants to go with. Did Joe Biden lose the left, or is he being controlled by the left? Like, you have to pick one. And these are things that are so contradictory, so obvious, that normal people, I think, will pick up on it. Like, it's not like the average voter is so stupid that they have to be, like, political strategists to pick up these little things. Like, these are, like, subtle things. These are really big contradictions that this moron keeps bringing up. And I, I think it was a little bit clever if Trump actually had a plan— to bait Biden to like denounce Bernie Sanders and he kind of did. Like I beat Bernie Sanders, sure. I get that you want him to do that because Bernie Sanders is popular, but at the same time, you're kind of like you're saying, Oh, well, you're being controlled by the left. I guess that means Bernie Sanders as well. But then it's like, well, you just lost the left. Like, I don't know. It just it, I, it doesn't I make sense to me why he thinks this is I don't think he's actually planning anything. I think he's just like oh. spitting like a uh, freestyle and just, it, he's landing on different sides of the same issue. Absolutely. I mean, he, he is just, just talking for the sake of hearing his own voice. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it, yeah, it is, it is something. I mean, you know, in, in 2016, I think there was a strategy there though. It was, uh, again, he sort of did the same contradictory thing where like Hillary, the, 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 the radical left of the democratic party is crazy and Hillary is going to give them what they want. Yet at the same time, those people are going to come and vote for me. I mean, what? Mm-hmm. I mean, but, yeah. but, but in 2016, at least the, 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 the strategy there was, I'm the anti-establishment candidate in 2016. The anti-establishment voter could possibly vote for me. And there were a few of them that did. That's not the case this time around. Like, there's no, you know, there, there's no anti-establishment Trump. He is the very definition of the establishment. He's the president of the United States. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, the, the idea that Biden is both beholden to the left, but also is going to lose the left is just not very well thought out. But mm-hmm. it's a good... Let's start talk about this part of the conversation. Let's move from Trump. It's a good thing, you know, that we didn't get... That the Dems, the Dems saved... Tur- turned the the car around when they were when it looked like Bernie was gonna win, and uh, yeah. and you know because otherwise, if Biden didn't win, man, we'd be hearing the Green New Deal being brought up in these debates. We'd be hearing Medicare for all being brought up in these debates. Without Bernie there, thank God those things weren't brought up at all. Otherwise, oof, who knows how that would have gone. Obviously, I'm being very sarcastic. I know they're only like overwhelmingly <laughs> popular. Yeah. And it's funny the way that, like, Trump, he he seems to be, like, someone who follows all of the polls that at least show him, like, in the lead. But, like, Medicare for All is super popular. And I was hoping that Joe Biden would bring up the fact that um, Trump did actually say, oh, I support a universal health care plan. I think it was, like, a CBS interview where he said, you know, it's going to co- – we're going to save so much money uh, when he was asked how he's going to pay for it. Like, this was right after he was – um, elected, but before he took office, like I'm, I'm blanking on like if it was CBS or ABC, but either way, like if Trump or if Biden would have brought that up, I think that it would have at least showed that Trump is hypocritical and that Biden is more consistent, even though his policy on healthcare is dog shit. I mean, like he didn't even really, he kind of low key backed away from a public option tonight, which. I mean, oh, he, he, didn't he said he supports he didn't, it, but then he, he didn't even he described, accurately describe a public option. He don't know what the hell he was right, doing. Right, right. I mean, yeah, he like what he's describing isn't a public option. It's oh, only only the the poorest people on med- like okay, that's the ACA. That's not a public option. Yeah, he was literally so describing what's currently in place, right? Yeah, so I mean, like imagine if Bernie were up on the stage and Trump would say, "Oh, well, you know, uh, you're you're a socialist." Like Bernie would actually have a thoughtful response, other than. No, I'm not. Because Bernie Sanders, like, he actually knows what he's talking about. And Joe Biden is trying to walk this fine line where he doesn't want to piss off the left to an extent, but he also wants to be a centrist. He doesn't really want to do that that much. I mean, sure, he'll tweak the ACA probably a little bit via executive orders, but his healthcare reform is garbage. It's dog shit. But with Bernie Sanders, like, he actually 
he has the advantage because Medicare for all is popular. It even polls really well with a plurality of Republicans, sometimes a majority of Republicans. So it, it's such a missed opportunity. Like, rather than being on the defensive, Democrats could have, like, put Trump on the defensive with Bernie Sanders. And now here we are where Joe Biden can't even describe a public option and Trump is still calling him a socialist. Like, it's almost as if no matter who was the nominee, the Republicans were just always going to call that person a socialist. And worrying about going too far left was uh, not something that was beneficial for the Democratic Party. Like, seeing what could have been is so frustrating because this could have been a Sanders-Trump debate and it would have been so much better. Mike is a total loser, so don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.